We obsessed over women's basketball. We obsessed over the big meaty men matchup in the Final Four, DJ Burns versus Zach Eady. And here we are, and UConn is very well positioned to repeat as champs. And they haven't really been tested. And Donovan Klingen is joining us now. Donovan, number one, holy hell, you guys are dominant, and you're a big part of that. And number two, how do you maintain this dominance? Uh, I know – you guys have had a really impressive season, but over the last two tournaments, you guys haven't come out flat once. You haven't really been tested. And the whole nature of this tournament with just one game sample after one game sample is inevitably you guys are going to come out flat or you have to find the motivation to, to win a grinder. And it hasn't happened yet. How have you guys been so sharp now going for two straight tournaments? Um, You know, Coach Hurley really – instills a lot of intensity and fire into us and makes us you know stay hungry um you know he he's a competitor he wants to win so bad and you know he reflects that on us and you know everyone in this locker room just really wants to go out there and win um you know like we come into practice today we'll go practice tomorrow this whole week really you know practicing like we haven't won anything and like there's you know there's still a lot on the table which there is and you know everyone realizes you know, what we're really trying to achieve. Um, and you really can't take your foot off the gas for a single second. You know, you're going to get every team's best shot. Um, you know, so you're really just staying hungry, really trying to compete for the the highest of accomplishments and, um, you know, really just staying hungry in practice and sticking together. Donovan, you already won a championship, so you have these moments, you have these memories or what have you. But that 30 to nothing run the other night, like within it seemed like you guys were having the most fun I've ever seen a college basketball team have. Can you sort of describe what that run was like and just kind of where it fits into your memories of college so far? Yeah, um, you know, I, I actually had no clue what run we were on. Um, you know, I knew that going into the half, we were up five. You know, we were playing great defense. Shots weren't falling on the offensive end. And, you know, at halftime, we talked about, you know, sticking to our defensive scripts. You know, just keep doing what we're doing. The shots will fall. Um, and then, you know, in that second half, really just coming off with the defensive intensity, you know, I had that big block in the second half, um, which led to the dunk on the other end. And I feel like after that, really just the energy within the team just changed. And everyone really was just trying to, you know, just one possession at a time, break the other team and, um, you know, come out with the win. Uh, you know, but that's just one thing about this team is everyone's so unselfish. Everyone, you know, whatever it takes to win, you know, whether that's zero points, 10 assists, 10 rebounds, you know, every single person on this team don't care about their stats. They just care, you know, care about winning. And, you know, that's why this team's so special. I, your your team is certainly special. And you articulated how Dan Hurley uh, motivates you guys. But, it is easier to tune out the noise and all that and have this tunnel vision and have success uh, when you're actually not part of the national conversation, which is wild to me, all that. You guys are poised to repeat, and yet the intention, and great players in their own right, uh, the attention may be going to other teams. Are you guys bothered by that, or it's just that's UConn basketball and it helps us maintain this program? That's how we like it. Yeah, I mean, you know, I feel like that keeps us hungry. Um, you know, people are going against us. People are rooting against us. And, you know, they want to see someone else win. And, you know, we hear that. We see that. And that just, you know, gives us a little more fire, a little more, you know, energy just to go out there and, you know, prove people wrong. And, you know, I feel like we've done that all year. You know, we had a target on our back, you know, coming off as defending national champions, you know, the whole season that we got every team's best shot. Um, and, you know, people still didn't rank us, you know, where we felt we should have been ranked. And, you know, so we just really just stay hungry um, and really just try to, you know, make people quiet. What do you think about Kling Kong? I love it. <laughs> do you, you like that nickname? I do. I love it. Doesn't it doesn't really roll off the tongue. What, what, have you had about? other nicknames in your career and this one just as easily the, the best one because you've just had bad ones? Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like this one really like took off like just after last year. Um, you know, people just call me you know, like DC and stuff around the locker room. Really haven't had it, like any you know big nicknames or anything, but you know, Clint Kong is just just turned into something big. Now you're a giant, and with <laughs> that, it, and you don't have the the pro travel accommodations. UConn t treats their their players very well, but you know, you're still taking some commercial flights that are that are that are blocked off and you're having to squeeze into tight situations can you explain 
the day in day out grind of having to be this college basketball player that is traveling from city to city in a world that isn't necessarily made for the to consider seven foot two people yeah i mean you know the last two trips have been um not not the most fun uh the bus ride to new york the bus ride to boston um you know the, the buses are definitely not the best for me and my size uh it's definitely more of a tight squeeze can't get comfortable you know with those three four hour rides what's the go-to how do you sit like what's like how do you get I comfortable to, i try to you know lay across the row and put my legs across the aisle into someone else's seat but then that's you know that's bothering someone else so you know really just constantly moving and never finding that comfortable that comfortable spot um but planes are much easier um you know we're we're very blessed enough to have you know charter flights to you know have the first class seats and the, the extra leg room which is nice so that that five hour flight to Phoenix shouldn't be too bad. All right, that that that's good. I am a little worried about the buses, but it's a college basketball team. There's a bunch of people that feel uncomfortable, but not quite a lot of seven foot two people. So, I, what about in everyday life, not just travel? What is we we all have seen throughout this run of yours that there are a lot of benefits to being seven foot two. But what is something that we take for granted as someone that is not seven foot two that is annoying to you in everyday life? Um, you know, clothes. You know, I try to find stuff that fits me and, you know, you're searching for, for hours. Um, you know, I got long legs and, you know, a smaller torso. So, you know, it's hard to find the pants in my length. Um, you know, I hit my, I feel like I hit my head 20 times a day. And, you know, that, but that obviously at times keeps me from getting concussions because I feel like I've hit my head so much that, you know, I got to hit really hard to, you know, knock me out. But, um, you know, it's... There's a lot of people around campus, a lot of people around stores stopping me for pictures and stuff. You know, I, I like that. I, I, you know, I appreciate the support, the love. Um, you know, there's a lot of benefits for being 7'2 on the basketball court. And there's a lot of drawbacks, you know, off the court. Who do you get? Because, like, now you're getting a little famous with this run and stuff. But, like, I imagine, do you ever get, like, you're somebody, but who are you type stuff? Um, Sometimes, yeah. I mean, like, really when we travel more than, you know, then when we're in Connecticut, you know, I grew up in Connecticut. Um, so, you know, I feel like I have a pretty big fan base in the state of Connecticut. But, you know, when you travel out of state, you know, I'm sure people in Phoenix that don't really know what's going on out there will be like, oh, it looks like you're. Yeah, it's Mike Muscala over there. player. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he looks like you're a basketball player. You know, what team do you play for? You know, it's like stuff like that sometimes yeah. that I'll get. That's got to be annoying. Like, uh, you must play basketball. Yeah, I I must. And I'm, I'm, I'm so quite good at it. You're just stopping me because I'm a giant. That's all That's all you're doing right there. You just have to talk to me because I have. At, surely at this size, I must be somebody. Yeah. <laughs> that's I get that all the time. What is the best thing about being outside of basketball? What is the best the, the biggest advantage of being as tall as you are? Ooh. Um I can reach a lot of things. <laughs> um no, I, I mean, you know, sometimes I like I like I like just seeing what's going on and you know, over crowds just and like stuff. Hovering like, above yeah. the crowd. Does it sink to go to a concert because you're worried about the person behind you yeah. and you're like, I get this all the time? Just or is me, it awesome? Let me know if I'm in your way. Is it awesome to be yeah. going to a concert or is it a little annoying? Uh, a little bit of both. You know, people stop you and try to get for pictures and stuff. Um, you know, but at the same time, you know, you don't get no one's in your way and you get to see everything. You don't miss a thing. But you're at like a movie theater and I'm just like, there's a poor kid sitting behind you. And it's just like, yeah, <laughs> sorry, buddy. <laughs> nah, Donovan, we mentioned those, you know, the big, the final four, the big meaty men in this final four. We talked about a little bit about how there isn't quite the place in the NBA for some of these big guys. I wonder what the big guys like yourself talk about. What does it take for you guys to feel like, hey, I'm going to succeed in the NBA today as a big man. What kind of big man has to succeed at that level? Yeah, um, you know, really just being as elite as possible in the, you know, the pick and roll game, you know, defending the rim at a high level. Um, you know, now with how the game has changed, being able to step out behind the three-point line and knock down a three here and there, um, you know, rebounding the ball, defense, you know, just really moving your feet. And, you know, because now you're switching on to guards and, you know, guards are speedy fast, you know, so really just trying to move your feet. And, you know, one thing I really thought about, you know, to myself is, you know, my team needs me for a certain, you know, needs me to play a certain way to be successful. And, you know, whenever my time comes to move on to the next level, you know, you work and try to expand your, you know, your game into many other ways. And, you know, you, 
you work your game towards how the team needs you. You know what I mean? I'm just right now, you know, I'm just trying to do whatever I can to help my team win and, you know, whatever way that is. And, um, you know, so, you know, however team, you, however your team needs you to play to win, you know, that's, that's what I'm willing to do. DC, I spent a little time in Connecticut. Uh, in West Hartford, are you an elbow room guy or a bar taco guy? Ooh, bar taco. Attaboy. <laughs> I love the question. No, he knows. No, he knows. Uh, he knows. DC, he knows he's yeah. been out there at the bar taco. Come on, he knows. Yeah, attaboy. Uh, DC, uh, we were talking earlier before you got here about how we've gotten got on IG ads. And I imagine your IG ads are all targeted because you're very tall. And it's not the easiest thing getting close, as you mentioned. Have you gotten got? By IG, have you ordered something <laughs> and it came in the mail and you're like, "There's just no goddamn way I can fit in this thing." Um, I feel like you, definitely sometimes, you know, some brands run a little bit smaller, and you know, I'm like, "Oh, this thing's, you know, this is nice sweatshirt," and then, you know, I'll, I'll order it and I get it, and I'm like, "I don't even know if this <laughs> fit my sister." You know what I mean? Like, it's like someone someone it, needs to do something about this. IG's getting away with this stuff. I. I I maybe have a 40% success rate on clothes that I buy off of IG. I got just... Donovan trying on a romper and being like, Ugh, this is not anything what I thought it would be. Yeah, then then there's those. Like maybe you've had, uh, maybe you're out and maybe your confidence level is different on a certain night. And you're like, when did I ever think that I could pull this off? Like a, a tie dye pair of sunglasses? Who am I? I'm not Macho Man <laughs> Randy Savage. Why did I'm 39 years old? And this is not something that you run into. But why? I have a wife that loves me. Who am I doing this for? Have you ever asked yourself who am I doing this for? <laughs> um, no. Nah, I mean, you just will. like like they you talk will. about the fashion. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's also you play in a sport where fashion is just so paramount, and people try to establish their brands, and so maybe you, you do something a little outside of your comfort zone because you're trying to, you know, establish the DC brand, and then you realize, like, why did I do this? This came in the yeah. mail. It barely fits me. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty basic, man. Sweat, sweatshirt and sweatpants. That's the way to go for me. Donovan, that look on your face is confusion. It's because Mike does these things. He has therapy with the guests. He talks his way through these things. Sure, this, is, I, this is for Mike's benefit. I don't think I'm in the. I don't. I'm certainly not in the middle of a midlife crisis because it's been happening for a while. And then maybe it's no, happening a little too early. John Mayer famously called it a quarter life crisis. Maybe I'm having multiple ones of that, but you'll, you'll see. You, let me just say, you, you will see. And <laughs> the IG ads are only going to get worse. Yeah. Are you a Frank yeah. Pepe's guy, DC? What is I've that? had it once. It's been a while. <laughs> what's, what's, your, what's your New Haven slice of choice? I'm cheese. I mean, he I, is I a basic guy. He just told you. He's... No, no, no. The place. The place. Place. Sally's. I like Sally's. Sally's. Okay. All right. Well, I wish you the best of luck. It seems as though you're going to be doing all right for yourself here in a couple of years, and yeah. you could just like maybe buy entire clothing departments as opposed to just getting targeted IG ads. I'm very happy for your success, even though I'm a Miami Hurricanes fan. And uh, <laughs> in retrospect, that's a team that's challenged somehow, even though you blew them out, is the team that's challenged you the most in the NCAA tournament. I hope for your sake it continues to be a flat track. And I gotta, I gotta say, the the bracket lays out pretty nicely. It, it if you guys beat. Alabama, do what you're supposed to do. You're going to be going up against a big man that you can flash your skill set and set yourself apart from. And I'm sure, just by the looks of you, you're you're kind of eager to get that spotlight and have people talk about you and what Coach Hurley is doing over there. Thank you so much for your time and continued success, sir. Thank you, Clint Kong. Thank you for having me, man. Appreciate you guys. Thanks, man. I got perhaps the single most concerning IG targeted ad of my life, and I you don't had a lot. I've had a lot of concerning ones, but this one takes the cake because it would appear that this ad that I got, it's got the product itself has one sole purpose, and it is to smuggle cocaine into music festivals. <laughs> the IG ad, I'm going to describe it as vividly Go as I on, can. Go on, I'm listening. So it's this dude on the sand and at, a, at a beach somewhere, and he takes out what looks like a you know, one of those new IG wallets that got me, certainly. And he takes this thing out, and he puts this uh, this wallet in the sand. And there's all these little holes, and you can he, he smooths it out, and you can barely see any of the sand at all in this little thin aluminum case. And then pops up a straw that he just takes out and just puts in the individual holes. Doesn't do anything doesn't with it. doesn't put the straw in his doesn't, mouth, does he? doesn't put the straw in his mouth. And so it shows its durability. It shows that, look, none of this sand will fall out 
of of this case. That's important. That sandals fall. And off. also, we had to showcase that it does have this straw, and it's not for s- slurping up some sand. the The whole purpose of this product is to smuggle cocaine in two places. Are we Jason Whitlocking ourselves? Because I have been a victim of the ad where it's clearly a grinder but they're doing like fresh herbs or like uh, food or their uh, cheese in it. Coffee and then they grinder. roll it into a little piece of paper and then here's how you get your cheese cigarette. And it's like, wait a second, why am I going to smoke cheese? And so they just Mike, cover couldn't it. also That's yours be stuff. for smoked some, Gouda? Some Gouda. Gouda. Yeah, Gouda. Somebody that needs oh, yeah. to, you know, they're at a restaurant yeah, and they need to bring sugar Gouda. for some coffee. Yeah, it could be for condiments. And I, yeah. I feel like I should have seen, <laughs> seen that application. But I also get targeted ads for mushrooms like crazy, like lion's mane. Uh, Good stuff. I've tried turkey the tail. Turkey gummies. tail. Yeah, that's good stuff. Like it's supposed to be like for mental clarity. But like two months with it, I'm pretty sure I'm the same amount of mental I clarity. I can't tell. There are times which I do. Uh, the irony is not lost on me where I forget to take my ginkgo <laughs> and I don't really see it. I started taking ginkgo when I s- felt like I was experiencing COVID brain. But really what's happening with me, and you can tell by my purchases, is I'm aging. Whether it be a hat that that I can wear in the pool, whether it be for mental clarity, whether it be for a, 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 a shirt that looks better because of its stripe pattern on someone of my size than than other people. Like the dudes tugging at their shirt in the IG ads are always getting me oh, like, dude, look that's at this me. shirt. Like, oh, B L Y T or whatever those <laughs> yeah. shirts or something. Oh, built. Oh, dude, I'm a big Bill. I'm wearing Bill right now. I'm built by Bill. Dude, they, that's all my. That's all me. They're just like, hey, here's a shirt that won't make you look fat. I, <laughs> I know. You're look, n- look at the side view. <laughs> no one's ever gonna believe me with this, and it's a losing battle. And I know it's April Fools, but I'm not joshing you. I've never done cocaine. The whole idea of cocaine scares me. So putting Same. something in my nose and snorting it. Look, if cocaine came in a pill form, which I'm sure it has. Mm. Uh, but I, I've never seen it around, nor have I been offered it. Anytime I get offered cocaine, I say no, no thank you very quickly. I don't do cocaine. I've never done cocaine. I only like the way that cocaine smells. <laughs> I've also never done mushrooms in the conventional sense. If someone's handed me a chocolate before, I've taken it, and I didn't notice anything. I've never done, like, all right, guys. We're shrooming. Is this a drug confession episode? What are we doing? No, I'm just being. I'm Chris, just being next. honest with you. Like, I'll, I'll. I'm honest about my gummies. You know, I love Miller Lite. I've. I've been honest about where I stand on on certain vices, but I'm just. I'm not a shroom guy. I'm not a psychedelic guy. And the last few years, where it's become a more regular part of the conversation, and the people that are touting these things, are precisely the types of people I don't want to take their advice on these things from. Like shamans. Like Dan. <laughs> or Jake Plummer, <laughs> or Jake Plummer, even though he seems like the most He's grounded, in. but He's like er, like Aaron Rodgers, like the guy has just gone totally bizarre in the public in the public eye, and you could draw like there's a line of demarcation when he started being honest about his regiment, and it's not the greatest endorsement, and I don't know if it's because of the work I do on this show. I don't understand how I'm getting targeted for these ads specifically. So you're not talking to us. You're talking to your Instagram right now. You're trying to change it up. Yeah, I don't. I, it's not even like I don't go searching for it. My al- I've never purchased any of these products. So I don't really necessarily understand how it's been on my algorithm. Certainly, there has to have been something in my in my search pattern. Maybe it's trying to constantly look up Aaron Rodgers on Pat McAfee clips that I'm getting targeted for these ads. I have what I've. I'm not going to stop drinking. I'm a, I am a social drinker. I like drinking. I hear you. But I don't, don't like my face getting so red after I drink. And I don't like getting fatter as I get older. Now, I've slimmed down some, but nowhere near to where I want to be. I see well, – I'm, th- I'm at that age range now where I see pictures taken from like seven months ago. And I'm like, man, I had it cooking back then. And I think it's like a bygone era. Like you should have seen me. Just seven months ago, I, I'm at that place right now where I feel like I feel myself aging. I took this medication; it did wonders for me, but it also put on 50 pounds. It feels like a therapy session, Tony. What were you on uh, when you saw God? Sober, baby. Really? Just, but just wow. clean. I, just water. There, that's it. But Abby there are to. people that espouse these virtues of uh, stopping drinking, and I've I've had friends in my circle. You know, <laughs> there someone needs to do a stand-up routine about how, like, around age 38. 
every friend group has at least like three folks that have decided they're going to stop drinking Wait for a, a little second. bit. I'm confused, Mike. What are you trying to find here? Are you so try- I've been looking at drinking alternatives. Mm-hmm. Uh, like Drinking alternatives. Seltzer water. I've been trying to, like, I, I like. That's I, the big one I'm always Yeah, I, I'm just, I'm exploring my options. I know that it's, there have been great health benefits from it. I've looked up fasting. So I don't know if that's how my algorithm, I'm just talking this out with you guys. Mm. I'm trying to see how I'm being targeted for mushrooms. I kind of understand based on my search history. The Coke wallet. I have no clue how that got in there. That one, I think they were fishing for you. Well, you, you live in Miami. The, you also bought the other wallet. You said they I got you the on a wallet. I bought the wallet, so but there's, in their algorithm there's a of difference. Like, this guy likes wallets. There's a difference. See how far he'll go. There's I bought difference. one wallet. <laughs> I bought. I did. I've only bought one wallet, Big wallet from Instagram, guy. and it was several years ago. But they see you on concert pages. They see you looking yeah, up yeah, stuff. Yeah, like this you guy make likes jokes. The party. They hear we your know this jokes guy likes here. Miller Lite. Yeah, no, I think what you're getting at it might be it. Bought a wallet once. I'm always posting about concerts. They're fishing. What about the rejoin with the uh, – probably your phone's here. My, my character that I p- portray on the air loves cocaine. A lot of chuggy group chats. Like, your, your subconscious is dealing a yeah. lot with, like, chuggies. And, yeah. You know, that's yeah. not drugs, but, I mean, alcohol yeah. is drugs. Roy, have you ever been targeted for a Coke wallet? Uh, no, not yet. Even though I'm like you, I bought a wallet as well. Oh, dude. All you did. As the pants get uh, slimmer and slimmer, well, the fit. Not certainly not the waistline. Mm. As the fits get slimmer and slimmer, I want a wallet that's not got a bulge out there, and also it's helped my posture by putting the the wallet in different pockets. We're actually going the opposite way now. Baggy's back, baby. Yeah, I've seen it that. Is. I don't I don't like the the baggy fit. I gotta be honest. I think people look like uh, David Byrne uh, with these big puffy suits. <laughs> I don't <laughs> like. In sync look back good. To the yachts. Yeah, but in sync look good when they do their their comeback photo shoot. But I just can't. Stop looking at What's going to happen when we get to the mid aughts style coming back? Because that was just a mishmash of a bunch of horrible styles altogether. Like, are we going to have the, like, remember the Kanye What's sunglasses? A Is that Hod- not a word? It's a mishmash. Hodgepodge. Hodgepodge. It's a hodgepodge. Mishmash. 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 Yeah, yeah. Fine. All right. What was Scotty it's like Barnes a wearing? Hodgepodge. The other day? Did you guys see that? Do we have any video of that? He was wearing, you were talking about a loose fit. Like, he was wearing some large pink bell bottoms, I want to say, with maybe some platforms. Scotty Barnes is. I think an uh, interesting character. I'm not. I'm not this big fashionista. Again, most of my <laughs> my wardrobe is now just. Oh, that fat guy's tugging at that shirt, and it seems to be stretchy, and the nipples look fine in that. Let me let me do that. I think my algo is all caught up on my horniness when it comes to uh, buying clothes. There's, <laughs> if you make something look kind of sexy, I feel like I would look great in that. I'm gonna buy it. There's uh, a few, se- several of those. It's not just the you know, I look thin in this, but like you know maybe some boxers. Never really was yeah. a boxer guy, but I was like, I don't know. That guy looks good in those boxers. I feel like I'm going to wear those. <laughs> boxer briefs. Boxer if, 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 never looks the nobody, same on me. You see yourself gonna, in it, you're like, I'm not going to broadcast myself <laughs> in these boxers, but, you know, I've seen myself in if, it. If it's funny that uh, my IG algorithm is just like, oh, this guy wants to look thin. He doesn't necessarily <laughs> want <laughs> the Be equipment thin? to get thin and do it himself. He just wants to appear thinner. So we're going to help my guy out over here. Yeah. At the start of the pandemic, I was getting all these resistance bands and all that they stuff. They did overtime work on those resistance bands. Oh, dude. Overtime. I, yeah, I just see one in my garage. I'm like, you got me good. I worked out twice with this thing. Got me so damn the good. The bar was always so tight. Like, you yeah. couldn't go to a certain point. You're just, like, doing half-ass squat. No, and resistance. Also, and also the resistance. It's very, like... Like, put this on We're holding legs. on for dear life on this door right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because there was there was one time I was doing chess and I just got smacked by the band in my back, and then I needed to buy something from IG to make the wealth go away. But my IG at targeted ads had specifically been like, all right, let's cut more of these corners. Yo, we know I what would, you're about. You don't want you don't want to put cutting. the work in. I would subscribe to your IG if it was just you working out. Because I went to one, I went to his house oh, one yeah. time to work about. I'm oh, not like that. No, well, no, no. no I'm saying like, by the way. no, no, no. I'm <laughs> saying like Mike, Mike getting out there and working on stuff that would yeah, inspire yeah, people. No, well, I mean, I'm, uh, inspire I mean, I'm beefy. People. I can throw up the the plates and stuff. I I go to the gym just regularly. Don't let him see you run. But I've cardio is not a part of this. Running side by side with this guy. Important, no important cardio, regiment, yo. by the way. No. This guy comes to my house as a guest, and his idea to work out is running in the sun. <laughs> it was just a warm up. It was just a the little warm up. He just wants block. to. He wants you know, to it's run. A big block. We had to run around. It was a hot. large block. 
and I was very, very tired. And we were doing all these lunges. I was so <laughs> tired after that. I've never invited that was Izzy the back. <laughs> never, never, back. I never want to work never out with Izzy back. ever again. This is why Chris and I don't hang out as much because when we first started hanging out, I took him to my trainer and he said he wanted to lose weight. He's like, ah, this is the worst. I I mean, wanna... That guy was awesome. Like, I, I should have stuck with it because it was, it was good stuff. It's just hard, man. I am <laughs> not actually interested in getting in good yeah, shape. I like just it. want to appear like I'm in That's good right. shape. Yeah. That's exactly how right. I feel. Yeah. Here, here. The difference between you and me, Izzy, when buying clothes based off of targeted ads on IG is you see clothes on someone and you're like that makes him look sexy and your decision is i will look equally sexy right. let me buy that if i see something where i'm like oh that looks really good on that guy my immediate response to that is well i won't look that good i know i won't <laughs> no, look that dude, good there's nothing more depressing than when you get get and when you got got on ig and it comes in and you put it in and it's just barely Awful. hanging over your belly button and you realize i it from from an IG st sizing standpoint, I'm essentially a quadruple XL. I'm going to take a picture of this outfit that I have. I've talked about it before. It's just Instagram got me once. It's like this like matching pants and button yeah. down. It's oh, like man. flat floral and it's just something I could never wear. But I tried to buy it, and I'm, I've am i never worn it. Can we make a bet where you can wear it on the air one oh, day? Oh, man. Please. It's so embarrassing. I it's probably snug at this point. I probably rock that thing. 